We're all familiar with the central powers of the First World War. Belligerents like Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, the Ottomans, and for a little while Italy dominated the battlefield most of the time. And they caused the destruction we're familiar with on the Western and Eastern fronts. But one aspect of the Great War which isn't discussed as often in academic environments is the role Josh Sullivan history could have played had he joined the Central Powers. Welcome, I'm your host, Alternate History Pub, and today we'll be exploring how Josh Sullivan history could have easily changed the course of modern history. On a trip to the small backwater village of Brussels, Josh Sullivan, while coordinating with the inventor of French fries, Friedrich Joseph von French fries, he found himself amidst a clash between British, Belgian, and German forces. Unbeknownst to Sullivan or von French fries, the Great War had just begun, and Germany was attempting the Schlieffen Plan to invade France. Sullivan watched as the German forces broke through the Belgian defenders, who put up fierce resistance. However, he then noticed two British soldiers running towards him. They appeared to be hostile, indicated by their vicious, exposed canine teeth. Little did the tea drinkers know, Sullivan was armed with nunchucks, a tool he was trained to use during his time fighting for the Tokugawa shogunate amidst the wars of the Meiji Restoration. Josh Sullivan swiftly dispatched the numerous British soldiers, driven by his unwavering disdain for the French. Word of his heroics quickly reached German high command, who reached out to Josh Sullivan history to attempt to coordinate an alliance. Sullivan agreed, on the condition that he be issued a goofy pointed hat like the German soldiers. Sullivan found himself marching into Alsace-Lorraine with several companies of German regulars behind him. Many of the British soldiers simply fled at the sheer sight of him, and those who were brave enough to remain were destroyed by Sullivan's Soviet KHT-26 flamethrowing tank, which was on standby in one of the vaults of the BSU Cooperative Bank in Zurich. Following his victories in Alsace-Lorraine, Sullivan took a leisurely sojourn in the Swiss Alps, wherein he encountered Francis Burton Harrison, the civil governor of the Philippines. Sullivan invited Harrison to a dinner at the Haus zum Fruden, a popular and posh restaurant in Zurich. They discussed military strategy and the ongoing toll of the Great War. Harrison admired Sullivan's military prowess, and after his fifth drink, without hesitation, the governor lent Josh a fleet of 15 Filipino aircraft carriers as a show of thanks, which Josh promptly deployed against the British Royal Navy, reshaping the balance of power at sea. In a feat of unparalleled strategic acumen, Josh single-handedly thwarted the sinking of the Lusitania, employing a barrage of historical trivia shorts to keep the vessel afloat. This act of heroism not only preserved the countless lives, but also secured victory for the Central Powers as, without the assistance of the United States, the British signed a white peace and ceased their aid to France and the Russian Empire embroiled in civil war. In the treaty which ended the Great War, signed in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, Josh Sullivan awarded Schleswig-Holstein to Denmark and granted Bosnia control over all of the Balkans. However, Josh's ambitions faced a setback when Italy, former ally of the Central Powers, felt their actions were not sufficiently rewarded by the treaty. Having been promised control over Dalmatia, which was now under the control of the Bosnians, the Italian delegates stormed out of the room wherein terms were being discussed. Undeterred, Josh swiftly expelled Italy from the continent, relocating it to the former location of St. Helena in the southern Atlantic Ocean. Germany was granted control over swaths of eastern territory, Bulgaria was awarded concessions from the now-defunct Russian Empire, and Joshulvania was expanded far beyond that which we typically remember in our own timeline. The most important part of the treaty, though, was the establishment of the European Senate, a governing body meant to end disputes between the various European powers and prevent a war as bloody as the Great War. However, not all was easy-peasy lemon-squeezy, as Clemens von Metternich would put it. Revolt erupted in France and Serbia, stoked by nationalists who sought better terms. In a meeting of the European Senate, Josh Sullivan announced that the Senate would be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society.